Hello everybody, praise be to God, and welcome back to another episode of Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door. So last time we finished up Chapter 5 in Kiel Hall Key, and now we're back in Rogueport to do some side quests. My big brother came back, safe and sound. It's all thanks to you, thank you Mario. Yeah, no problem. Better get Goombella out. Cause it's Ouija time! Well, I got another piece of that marvelous compass at Jazafraz Town this time. Bro, I'm telling you, I turned adventuring into an art form on that little quest. Whoo! It was pretty nutty, bro. Want to hear what happened? It's a pretty long story. Yep. Hey, sounds good to me. Which part of my story you want to hear? Jazafraz Town. Well, like I said, it's a really long story, but here goes. As soon as we hit Jazafraz Town, we were overcome by the glitz and the glamour. It's a very lively place, bro. Tons of daisies live there, and they're always smiling. While looking for the piece of compass, I met a hip daisy named Hazy. Hazy was a producer, and he was looking for actors to go on stage with him. I told him we couldn't, since we were looking for the compass part, you know. But Hazy said we could win the compass part in the upcoming Drama Slam. He said the so-called Drama Llama plaque might, in fact, be one of the pieces. Well, we just had to give it a try, so we rehearsed with the cast and hit the stage. Our musical was called The Mystery of the Fiery Hat of Social Awareness. The script was great, but I was really hosed, bro. My role, my part was grass! I played grass by the side of the road! Grass, bro! Grass! I was sprawled out on the ground and had to be silent. Everyone but me had lines. I don't care if I was wearing green. Who cast someone based on that? It was awful! In the end, our musical was the talk of the town and we won the drama slam. I got the compass part I was after, but even that didn't make me very happy. The huge after party just bummed me out more, so I snuck out the back door. But wow! Outside were tons of fans! My fans! Fans of grass! They swarmed me! I just couldn't believe it! Imagine! Cheering for grass! I was ecstatic, bro! After that, I added the piece to the marvelous compass which pointed north. It pointed to the rapturous ruins in Grimble Forest. Then, the voice again. Oh, my cherished Princess Eclair! How you soothe me! I would be grass for you! I will find you! I will reach you! I will stand by your side and be your Luigi! Wow, sorry about that, bro. Um, so yeah, anyway, then I got back on my boat. I came back to Rogueport, and here I am, another leg of my adventure completed. <laughs> if you want to hear what I've been up to, just come find me, okay? I'll be around. Poor Luigi. But I, would, I wouldn't mind being cast as grass. I hate performing in front of people. I'm Hazy, and I must say Luigi's a great actor, one of the finest I've seen. After this adventure, we're going to tour on tour to appear on stages everywhere. I'm going to be known as the Red Miracle, and of course, Luigi will be grass. That's... okay. That's Luigi's daisy friend, Hazy. Apparently, Hazy's an actor slash director. You know Luigi's acting debut, right? The grass fane? I could never play grass. I'd want to play a princess, and a prince would wake me with a kiss. So romantic. Well, now we've got the boat, so... We can sail in the harbor now. So actually, there's a whole other area over here, which is pretty cool. With an old abandoned TV and a bucket, even. That's kind of cool. And we get the HP Drain Badge. Drops Mario's attack power by one, but regain one HP per attack. And Star Piece back there. Making sure there's no hidden panel. Okay, good. Sweet. Now that we've got the boat, we can get so many secrets in Rogueport now. Like, so many. Since it's a harbor-side town, that makes sense. Lots of water to go through. Later, Ouija. Alright, dude. <gasps> the Jumpman Badge, that's a good one. Alright, uh, new email. Who's this from? We have RDM Issue 4. 
Report today, dusk today. Gomez, age 40, known for napping in the flowers in the West Side Park, was found eating flowers and given a stern warning by authorities. Asked for comment, Gomez stated, Well, I just really, really love flowers and I was hanging out, and before I knew it, they were in my mouth. I'm so ashamed. Citizens of Rogueport responded with disbelief and grudging support for the strengthening of flower conservation efforts. Shop, reporter, go! This time we introduced the Twilight Shop. Watching the husband and wife proprietors at this shop of this shop at work is a heartwarming sight. But don't get on the hubby's bad side. Don't you go smiling at my wife, says the jovially jealous shopkeeper. I'm hers for life, and your fancy big city teeth aren't going to change that. Well, who could doubt their eternal love? Surely not this reporter. We asked the shopkeeper for fervor comment, but regret his words are unprintable here. But we did learn that the little misses <laughs> from the little misses that there will be a double point sale for all RDM readers. Just show her this screen in the next 15 minutes to double your points on any purchase. Cooking for rookies. All right, my little rookies, we're on to an intermediate level dish today. The dish is a healthy salad. Just slice up a turtle leaf and a horsetail, mix them together, and you're done. Great for dieters. Editor's note: That's all for today. But check your mailbox soon for another exciting issue, published by the Rogueport Restoration Committee. Did I get the third issue? No, I didn't read this one. The XS Express ran late for the first time in 10 years today as a suspicious incident activated st uh, station security measures. Area youth and local huge train enthusiast Wacky, age 18, was found taking pictures in an employee-only area near the Express and was gang-tackled by local Samaritans. I understand how much people are into trains, but we've got to, uh, safety and security measures to uphold, blustered the train engineer. The youth was released with a warning, this time. Shop reporter go. This week we hightailed the Glidsville sales stall. Though they've never attracted as many customers as the nearby hot dog shop, the proprietor is certain that any day now people will in fact notice that his shop exists. Early on in the interview, the owner of the nearby hot dog stand cornered our reporter and had this to say, Who needs sales stall? My hot dog gives you all you want. Only ten coins now. A minor scuffle broke out shortly thereafter, but we're happy to report that no one was seriously injured. Apparently everyone in Glitzville knows how to roll with a punch. Cooking for rookies. Hey there, rookies. Flex your bendy straws because today's recipe is for fresh juice. Just blend honey syrup until you reach a nice frothy texture and enjoy. Try one in the morning to start your day off right. Editor's note, we're just getting started. People wait until you see the glorious next issue published by the Roadport Restoration Committee. I must have gotten that email at the exact same time that I got a different email. Sorry about that, folks. Let's see what the bad shop has to offer. Damage dodge, that's a pretty good badge. Okay, I will not need ice power anymore since we're outside of the that world. Nor do I really need super appeal P. I need five for defend plus. So I don't really need charge if I don't have power bounce on. Put on Quake Hammer and Piercing Blow. Sorry, dude. Hey, dude. Oh, what impeccable timing! Yes, this was destined. When I consulted my star charts, I saw a portentous sign for you, Mario. It went thusly. In the house of the dragon that flew through the air, beyond the reversible stair, near the empty black chest that cursed you, lies a clue to help your allies learn. I have no idea what it means, unfortunately, but I have no doubt of its importance as a sign for you and your friends. If you figure out this mystery, come and tell me immediately. So that's a clue uh, leading towards the Ultra Stone. Anyhow, we gotta visit the Fazanir door. Also, now that we've got Bobbery, we can open up some new shortcuts. Okay, he was too far away from that. So we can blow that up. Gives us a warp pipe that will warp us into the background.
What could be in here? Hey, dude. What's up? <laughs> Welcome to Chet Ripper's Adjustment House. This is where you come to adjust your abilities or your partner's ranks. If you want some adjustment done, talk to me from the other side of the table. That's Chet Rippo, the adjuster. He can adjust your stats or your partner's ranks. Me, I wouldn't trust this guy with anything more complex than plucking back hair. I know I always say you shouldn't judge a book by its cover, but still. <laughs> You've come quite a ways. This is Chet Rippo's adjustment house. If you think you want to change your abilities or your partner's ranks, then I can adjust those things for the low, low price of 39 coins. So, who needs adjustment, huh? No. Well, come again. Basically, how that works is, yes, you can be like, alright, I want, like, more BP, but in doing so, you also lower your HP and your FP. We can also blow up that column to create this nice little shortcut. Connecting the two side halves of rope port. And, hey, Dazzle. I need happy flower. Oh, but power plus. Power plus. Power plus is too good to resist. All right. Browse in your door first, Artie. This is the part of the game where the Rogueport Sewer now gets overrun by new enemies. Oh, hang on a second. Going back to my badges. Instead of Piercing Blow and Quake Hammer, I want to put on Spike Shield. What's a paratrooper doing here? Wow, I, with the Power Plus badge, I can kill the Paratrooper just by jumping on his head a couple times. That's a Magic Koopa! You know, a Koopa Wizard. Max HP is 7, attack is 4, and defense is 0. It'll throw a load of pain our way while using magic to help its buddies. What a creep! And when there's only one of them, it splits into multiple copies to mess with us. Stop this fade fast, or we'll be in a world of hurt. It's a little too late for that combo. Well, why do I always spin the Poison Mushroom? Heck no. Yeah, oh, I thought I jumped on his head. Ouch. I love Spike Shield. And we're here with Koopa Trolls. Not the dark Koopa Troll from Glitzville, this is regular. That's a Koopa Troll, a Koopa Troopa who protects himself with spiked armor. Max HP is 6, attack is 4, and defense is 2. It attacks with its shell and with its head, and sometimes charges up for a fierce move. Plus, if you take too long with to win, it can call reinforcements. Yeah, sorta of gnarly, huh? It's one of the worst of Bowser's guys. Koopa Troopas dream of being Koopa Trolls. Hey, and by the way, what do you think Bowser's doing now, anyway? Eating? Man, they are hard to defend against. Take this. I need me more BP. Alright. There are also Hammer Bros hanging out in the Rogue Port Sewers, but we've already tattled on them, so no big deal. Alright, Faz in your door. Rest assured, we will show off Sweet Feast later. Probably not this episode. But later on. Only two crystal stars left.
So that looks like an interesting area. And that Crystal Star looks very similar to the one we got in Glitzville. The location of a Crystal Star was recorded on your magical map. Come on, let's go talk to Professor Frankly. Oh, yeah. Great news, my friends. The next Crystal Star is in Poshly Heights. Wait a sec, you mean where all the rich and famous live? Like movie stars and stuff? Yes, yes, and I'm fairly sure there's also a shrine to the stars called Poshly Sanctum. No fearsome monsters or dangerous dungeons either, it's just a tourist attraction. So, uh, a little help here? To get to Poshly Heights, we should... That's the best part! You ride the most famous train of all, the Excess Express! Yes, after a luxurious dream of steam engine excursion, the next Crystal Star will be yours. Getting those Crystal Stars has been back-breaking work, but this time will be a cinch. But I thought you had to be, like, rich or famous to get an XS Express ticket. Hmm, that may be true. Perhaps you should ask Don Pianta for help with this, too. Oh no! No, 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 no! Not that psychopath again! Oh well, I guess we don't have much choice, huh? Come on, Mario, let's go. Excellent! Then we're set! We may not have much time left, so you must hurry. I'll gather all the information I can. You guys just handle your end of things. Alright, well first things first, I want to get that Ultra Stone. So we have got to go back to Hooktail's Castle. Again. I think this will be the last time, though, thankfully. Still can't get that chest yet. However, there is a boat here. Let's ride it out. Well, hey, howdy, hey. We get a shine sprite. Nice. And unfortunately, we can't reach that pipe just yet. We've got to learn a different ability to get that one. I still can't believe I don't have the first attack badge yet. That's really going to be annoying to have to go for Hooktail's Castle if I can't kill the enemies really easily. Past the chest, we're going back into that spike room, remember? And you may have remembered, there's a crack in the wall here. Well, now that we finally have Bobbery... Um... Now that we have Bobbery... What the heck? Thank you! Man, that was difficult to bomb open. Well, that was interesting. And we get an up arrow! It's unclear what this means. You should probably ask somebody. Alright. Alright, so we got the up arrow now. So let's uh, tell Merlin what we got. Here you go. What's this? An up arrow? An up arrow? Up? Of course! This is the Ultra Stone, so that is what the star sign meant. I picked this up at a flea market years ago and forgot it was in the attic. With this, I can power up your partners even more. We are cooking now. Let me know when you want me to power up your allies more. Okay, so he forgot it was in his attic, and somehow somebody knew that and hid an up arrow in Hooktail's castle just for the express purpose of reminding Merlin where it was. Also, Merlin has totally got a star point uh, uh, below his beard. I never even realized that. 
All right, welcome to the home of Merlin the Super Magician. I foresaw your arrival. So now we can upgrade partners again. So I'm going to start with Dumbella, because she's the one I probably use the most. Shazubi! Shazubi! So now that Goombella's level 3, she deals free damage per head bonk, and on top of that gets the ability Rally Wink, which lets Mario attack again. I'll also upgrade... Sid. Shazibi! Upgrading Sid again will let him do 6 hops for his ground pound, deal 6 damage with Gulp, shoot 4 mini eggs, and gets the ability Stampede, which is basically ground pound on all ground enemies. It's very useful. And plus, now he has 30 HP. I'll also upgrade Vivian, because she's super useful in battle. With this, Vivian will do, I believe, 6 damage for Shade Fist. Still 6 for Fiery Jinx. Veil vale works the same. And then gets the ability Infatuate, which can confuse all enemies. And now Bobbery. With his first level up, Bobbery will deal more damage and gets the ability Hold Fast, which basically means enemies who directly touch him will take damage. Not a great ability. But it also gives him more HP. Then you may go. So yeah, after a single level up, that was his first level up, Bobbery now has the same amount of HP as I do. If we give him another level up, he's going to have even more. Alright. Let's sort out people's troubles. Okay, only two. Eve and Goom Goom. Goom Gooms I'm actually not going to do until the after Chapter 6, because the reward is not very good, and it, it requires us to backtrack through Kill Hall Key, and we can get a pipe shortcut there after the Sixth World, so we'll just do Eve. I want you to meet and speak to somebody for me. I'll tell you all about it at my house in Twilight Town. Alright. We can do that eventually. Yeah. If we go back here, there's a boat for us to take. See, there's just boat panels everywhere in the report. And inside this chest, we get the double dip badge! During battle, you can use two items in one turn. I've never really taken advantage of that a whole lot. I don't think there's anything back here. Okay, no. Had to check, though. Sir, is there a tale you want to hear? These are the tales I can tell you now. Three new ones. The Demon's Curse. For a mere five coins, I can share with you the tale of the Demon's Curse. The four heroes thought they had sealed away the demon and all its powers. But the demon used a tiny opening before the seal was complete to curse them all. While holding the crystal stars, they'd feel nothing. But when they let them go, a black box would appear to seal their souls within. The four heroes traveled the world, scattering the stars so the seal would remain. But the last four stars each carried the curse, which claimed each hero. If there is another tale you wish to hear, just ask. So that's how the four black boxes showed up. The Great Tree and the Punies. The hiding places of many of the crystal stars have now faded into legend. But some say that the wise Goomba hid one in the Great Tree. At that time, many monsters wandered in the nearby Bogley Woods. 
The tiny punies were always tormented by their fierce appetites, it was said. Pitying them, the Goomba hollowed out the great tree for the punies to live in. The punies were so grateful that they swore to protect the crystal star there. Oh, that's nice. The Pirate King Cortez. The Koopa hero went to a southern isle to hide his star where none would find it. But the Koopa was so tired from his journey that the Pirate Cortez stole it easily. In that very instant, the brave Koopa was trapped in an inescapable chest. But Cortez did not realize the power of the star and lost it among his treasures. That's pretty cool. I did not mean to hit you, dude. I'm sorry. Alright. Dude, are you selling the first attack badge yet? Seriously? No, he's selling the Timing Tutor or an Ultra Shroom. I will keep that in mind. What items do I have? Oh, hey! Super Luigi 2, manager's pick. Yes, please. We gotta read it right here, right now. Super Luigi 2. Super Luigi Volume 2, Allies in Adventure. It's a little warm, Luigi muttered, the sweat dripping from his brow as he followed the compass up Rumplebump Volcano's side. Must find the secret grotto. While Luigi had guts to spare, he did need a guide, and he found one in Bluey, a blooper he met in town. Brave Bluey joined Luigi and instantly proved to be invaluable. With his aid, Luigi bested a savage statue that protected the treasure. That treasure was none other than a piece of the marvelous compass, a piece that pointed west to Plump Belly Village. The second Luigi saw Plump Belly Village, he knew something was amiss. All was woe, and Luigi soon learned the reason why from the mayor. The town was at the mercy of a sinister serpent, who demanded sacrificial lasses. Burning with indignation, Luigi formed a team of liberators. A fierce bob warrior named Jerry joined his crew, and chose, not surprisingly, to stick with Luigi for, for the duration of his quest for Eclair. Fortified by his allies, Luigi strode on into the lair of the beast, a foul two-headed snake. No time to think, Luigi sprang forth. Twin heads snapped at his heels, veins dripping with venom. Then as one mouth gaped wide to swallow Luigi, the other crept behind. Our hero sensed the treachery and fainted before leaping. The heads collided and the beast ate itself. The prize? A compass piece. The villagers begged their savior to stay with them, but a grim-faced Luigi pressed bravely onward to be continued. I, have a feel I like the way Luigi told it better. Alright, what can I sell here? Wacka's bumps sell for a ton! Uh, I'm not going to use the shroom broth. I'll sell the shroom broth for 20 coins. It's probably a little late for the fresh juice to be all that useful, but... Eh. I'll sell the peach tart. I'm not going to use it. Alright. So I've got coconuts. I've got a different Wackus Bump. I'll take out my other Wackus Bump as well as... Golden Leaf. Castaways return from the cursed island of Keohaw Key. With treasure, maybe? Graffiti corner. Mustache guy is back from Key Hall Key. I want to go. Who cares if I get cursed? A guy who wants to make some easy money. Well, good luck. Cortez is not sharing his treasure. Alright. I want you to cook up my Wackus Bump. Just cook it. The way the game wants you to make this recipe is by mixing an Ultra Shroom with a Slow Shroom, but that's very expensive. Just cooking a Wackus Bump is much better. As you can see, it's very good. Sorry to keep you waiting. Looks like it came out perfect. Yum. Go on, take it, Stompy. And we get the Zest Special, a tasty meal made by Zest Tea, replenishes 20 HP and 20 FP. That's actually worse than the Wackus Bump. But never mind, this is the true power of the Wackus Bump. Golden Leaf, plus Wackus Bump. This is one of the best recipes you can get in the game right here. 
Sorry to keep you waiting. This should be a nice dish. Go on, take it, Stompy. We get the Zest Deluxe, a tasty meal made by Zest T. Replenishes 40 HP and 40 FP. Now that's a good meal. So, out of curiosity, what recipes have I not made? Mushroom, please, and thank you. Also, if we go back here. Ooh, free shine spray. Nice. With that, we can actually upgrade Bobbery again, which is pretty cool. We'll do that in a bit. Man, super shrooms are expensive. All right, store my deluxe, please. As well as... Actually, you know. See, I'm f I have a ton of items that are like, alright, but I don't really use in battle because I'm super good. <laughs> Way to sound cocky, I know. Alright, I should still have enough cake mix left. Yep, I can get one thing of cake mix. And I still have enough Piantas to continue with the parlor. I've, what I'm thinking is, after this episode and before the next one, off camera, I'm gonna grind on the Pianta parlor to get like a ton of Piantas. That way, I really won't have to worry about doing it during an episode. Because the paper game is by far the best game you can use to grind on Piantas. All right. A couple simple recipes. So I'm going to mix my mushroom with my jam and jelly. I think you all know what this is going to make. Yep, jelly shroom. Dessert my best tea replenishes 5 HP, 50 FP. Now for the other one, I'm going to mix the cake mix I just got with my Ruin Powder. You remember the side quest that we learned about this from? Sorry to keep you waiting, I'm not entirely sure you'll like it. And we get a Heartful Cake, a Zesty Cake replenishes 20 FP, but also softens you. I do not like that. I do not like being softened, because then you take extra damage. Come on, dude. Oh, it's st still the same stuff, obviously. I can't remember if he sells the first attack badge or if the badge shop does. Whatever. Oh man, Heartful Cake sells for pretty much nothing. Oh, lame. Oh, and I can only store six more items? Are you kidding me? I need to find a battle and just eat some stuff to get uh, my refund. Close Call, Sleep Stomp, Simplifier, Power Rush, and Shrink Stomp. How many of these do I actually have? So I have Shrink Stomp. I have Close Call. I do not have Power Rush. And I don't have Simplifier. Okay. Let's 
start by buying simplifier, I guess. And I don't have enough for power rush. That's okay. I'm not a fan of the power rush badge, even though it's probably the most broken badge in the game. Simply because you can get an unlimited amount of it and then use Chet Rippo to lower your HP to permanently 5, so you're always in danger. And then you can just equip a ton of those badges and kill everything in sight. Alright, powering up Bobbery again. So this not only makes him more powerful and gives him an obscene amount of HP, he also gets the ability B Bombast, which is basically Mega Bomb from Paper Mario 1. Da heavily damages all enemies. Then you may go. So yeah, Bobbery now has 40 HP, which is 10 more HP than I have. So he's pretty good. Alright. I should not hurt. Anyways, to Twilight Town <laughs> for the trouble request. So now there are more dangerous enemies than Spanias down there. We got Hammer Bros and Koopa Trolls down there. You've accepted my trouble request? Well, it's hard to talk about it in front of the children. Can we step outside? I need you to help me meet someone. His name is Podley, my former love. We had the same dream, to be stars of the musical stage. We shared our dreams, and we shared a wonderful love for a time. In that cramped little apartment, we huddled together, poor, but happy. But when I finally got a part in Broadshroom, the Broadshroom play as the leading lady, Podley left me. He left a quickly scrawled note that said only this, My dear, I would only dim your bright future. Farewell. Oh, Podley, why? My dream was always to be with you, not to be a star that shines alone. I wanted only to shine with him. Success was nothing without him. I left the production while I, it was in rehearsal. I forgot about Podley and my dreams. I got married and lived the life of a housewife, happy in its quiet comforts. And now, I'm surrounded by beautiful children. My happiness is so complete now I had forgotten about those days. But then I heard a rumor that Podley was running a Chocola shop in Rogueport. Could you please tell him that I would like to see him again? Tell him that pure-hearted Eve has not forgotten her first love. Yes, Pure-Hearted Eve was my stage name. Please meet with Podley and ask how he feels about me. Please, Mario. So I'm just going to go on an assumption that her husband's no longer in the picture, because otherwise this is completely wrong. This Twilighter's still a pig. Whoops! Maybe not. Oh my gosh, you can't tell her I said that! I'm so serious! Take it to the grave. Wow, Goombella. That is rude. <laughs> that is very rude. Alright. Oh, yep, sure enough, there's Hama. <laughs> My dad, Hammer's gonna beat you up, son. That is actually what he sounds like. Not really. Finally have the first attack badge. No, he doesn't. Talk on it, man. Come on. So Podley's right here. Let's talk to him. 
Welcome to Podwee's Place, an intersection of human lives and drama, if you will. What's that you say? Hmm? What is it, Mario? Tell me, you look so serious. What? Eve? I know no such person. But perhaps you could tell this Eve person something? Tell her, live in the moment. And is that all you needed? Because I'm a little busy. Oh my Eve. Well, that's gonna have a sad ending, isn't it? Regardless, she asked, so we must oblige. Power Rush is still here. I've returned to Eve. <laughs> Mario's got like this side. Have you met with Podly? Really? What did he say? Tell her the truth. So Podly has forgotten about me. <laughs> That's fine. I guess I was just feeling nostalgic. I'll probably forget about it. You know, I have these little ones to think of, so I have plenty to keep my mind busy. <laughs> Mommy! So hungry! Food, food! Oh, we're having a feast tonight, kids. I have special dinners from Zesty's shop. Mario, you have one too. And we get a meteor meal for that, which we can sell for like 40 coins, so that's pretty good. Thank you so much, Mario. You breathe new life into this old girl's heart. You solved the trouble. Yum yum, mommy. Why are you crying, mom? Oh, jeez, yeah. Hey, Mario, you're back. Gift for me? I thought one of them said pork chops. Aw. That's Eve. It must be hard work raising all these kids, so I totally respect her. My mom always said that only hard work brings happiness. You think that's true? Not only hard work. I mean, that's definitely a contributing factor, to quote Harry Potter, but... <laughs> Movie Harry Potter. That was not in the books. Alright, that's all the time we have for this episode. Thank you very much for watching. I'm Colorful Artie. Tune in next time. We will uh, find a way aboard this train one way or another. Hope to see you then. Have a great day, and God bless.